What's up fam? Welcome back to the channel. We are coming in hot this weekend with the announcement of the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II coming out of Sony Camera Camp, which going to Sony Camera Camp is a goal of mine. So Sony, if you're watching this, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that sucked. The Mark II is dropping three years after its predecessor with a very solid spec boost. Firstly, it looks like this camera is truly designed for vloggers and it's actually coming at a somewhat low barrier to entry. It's not only gotten a spec boost, but it's actually a bigger camera overall. However, this doesn't mean that it's heavier. It's actually lighter than the Mark I. It seems like it's an amazing camera both as an entry level and as an upgrade from the Mark I. Let's start with some overall specs. First, let's talk about the price point. The body only is gonna come in at $1,000, but if you get it with the kit lens, it's gonna run you about $1,100. To put that in perspective, it's a mirrorless camera with the same ASPC sensor as the FX30, which for the body alone is going to run you about $1,800. All in all, $1,000 for a body isn't too bad. On top of that, it's an E-mount, so if you already have some E-mount glass from Sony, you're going to be able to use that on this camera as well. It also received a much needed battery life upgrade going to the NP FZ100 batteries. These are the same batteries as the Pro counterparts that are in the A7 lines, so that includes the A7R, A7S, and the A7 lines. It's also the same as the FX3 and many other cameras that Sony puts out. The ISO is gonna range from 100 to 32,000, and you can actually expand that further to go to 102,400. Now, is that really necessary? I don't know, but we can expect that low light performance that we've come to know and love from Sony. Another great thing on here that's actually the same as the a7 IV, which I'm shooting on right now, is the 759 point phase detection automatic focusing system. We're also getting a directional three capsule microphone, so that's gonna allow you to shoot all around and it's gonna pick up whatever the subject is saying. Another thing, there's no IBIS here, so they're gonna be using the electronic image stabilization. All right, next, let's talk about the interface and how they've actually geared it a little bit more towards creators and ease of use. For starters, it seems to be a simpler interface overall, gearing it more towards creators and entry-level users. Basically, they created this camera to make it easy for you to just go create. It's got a three-inch LCD touchscreen on the back that swivels out, which we've seen in Sony's newer cameras. One really cool feature that I'm actually really excited about and I hope continues to kind of carry through is when you're shooting vertically, the screen actually rotates, so all of your on-screen displays are going to be lined up vertically rather than horizontally. This is huge and really great because it accommodates to your personal shooting style. Another great thing that continues to drive home the ease of use for creators is the ability to swipe left and right to switch between modes and functions, making it a lot easier than trying to find the function button or anything that you've seen in more of the professional line that may take you a little bit to kind of dig through to find stuff. Another great thing if you're always on the go is the ability to transfer your files through the Sony Creators app, which if you don't have a dongle like this is going to be great. Sometimes I have it, but I don't have access to it when I'm in the car. So I'll use the app just to download, you know, one or two pictures that I shot while we were on the road and then flip that just so we can have it ready to use or anything along those lines. All right, now let's get into the main course. We're talking video specs. The big one that a lot of creators are gonna love is the 4K 60 frames 10-bit 422. However, the only drawback here is it's gonna come with a 1.1X crop. Really not that bad to be honest, especially if you've got a wide enough lens, It's you're not really gonna notice it too much. But it does still shoot 4K 24 and 4K 30 uncropped with that 10-bit 422. You're gonna love that, trust me, it's great. Backing that up with 14 stops of dynamic range, it's great to see that with a camera of this caliber. One thing that Sony seems to have put a big emphasis on here was the creative looks that are integrated in the camera. Basically, these are baked in presets that allow you to achieve the look that you're going for without doing too much work in post in terms of color grading. However, it does shoot an S-Log3 and S Cinetone for those who wanna take control and do their own color grading in post. Personally, I've grown to love shooting in S-Log3 over the last year or two. I feel like I've finally found a consistent look that I really like. Another cool feature that I've actually come to love in my Sony a7IV, they've pulled into the Mark II, which is focus breathing compensation. I actually didn't even know the a7IV had this until my buddy Jayhawk told me about it, and it's actually crazy how much of a difference it makes. Basically what it does is when your camera is racking focus from either front to back or back to front, you're gonna to see along like the edges that the camera breathes or like warps so it's going back and forth I can kind of show you here so look at the phone if it'll focus there we go and then coming to me it's really not, you're not noticing any distortion or warping kind of like in the corners here. Whereas like in some other cameras that don't have the focus breathing compensation, you're gonna notice that it kind of does that little jolt. So this is actually insane and it definitely helps creators a ton who are, you know, you're starting low, you might start your talking point and then you get back. You're not gonna have that, that real jitteriness in the corners. All right, 
Let's talk about the photo specs. Now, because this camera is more geared towards vloggers, it's gonna be a little bit beefier on the video spec side rather than the photo. However, it's no slouch here when it comes to the photo side because we're coming in with 26 megapixels. That's very solid. The a7 IV has 33. So what I'm saying is this is gonna be very solid for pictures. One drawback, obviously, again, because this is geared towards vloggers, not really taking a bunch of photos. There's no EVF or an electronic viewfinder. So you're not gonna be able to put your eye into the camera and kind of look around. But with that three inch LCD touchscreen, you're still going to be able to shoot just looking at the screen. Half the time when I'm shooting, probably even more than half, I'm just looking at the back of the screen. All right, let's talk my final thoughts and if I think this camera is actually worth it or not. What I love is Sony's bringing these incremental changes from its professional line down to its entry level line. Essentially, this is closing the gap between its entry level vlogger style cameras and its professional line. This is awesome. You're getting so many great features that used to be reserved just for the professional line, now in an entry level camera at a much lower price point. One big thing that the Mark II provides is a great runway for those who are looking to develop both from a photo and video perspective. Now, do I think this camera is worth it? Definitely. If you're looking to start out and really start creating content seriously, this is a great camera for you. Coming in at $1,000 or 1100 if you want the kit lens, you really can't beat that for what the specs are bringing. To wrap this all up, if you're in the market for a camera and you're really wanting to take your content creation seriously, I would recommend it and definitely use it as a starter camera or an upgrade from your current setup. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel helps me out a lot. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, and let me know if you think this camera is worth it and if you're going to be picking it up or not. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.